So let's have a look at adding fractions with unlike denominators, different denominators. So this is where you've got to know your times tables. You've really got to know them, otherwise this becomes super slow. So I've got a copy here of the times tables, but if it's in your head, it's so much easier. Okay, now the basic rule is the same, right? The denominators stay the same. But how can they stay the same when they're different? Well, you make them the same. So you might think about when we were doing, looking at the cancelling down in the cancelling down video, if you've seen that one, we talked about equivalent fractions. So the idea is to manipulate these two fractions so that the fractions themselves don't change, but the way they're written changes. The way they're written changes so that their denominators are the same. So you've got to change the fractions. Okay, first, you've got to pick the denominator. You've got to pick the denominator that they're both going to have. They're both going to change to have the same denominator. And how do you do that? You do that by using your times table knowledge. So think about the equivalent fractions. Remember what you did? You thought about, well, where can I find 5 and 3 in the same times table? Okay, so here's a times table over here, and let's have a bit of a look. So I'm kind of scanning, I'm looking. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, I might trace along with uh, the 5s. And look at that, that's where it interacts with the threes. Okay, the fives and the threes come together here at 15, right? So 15 is in both the five times table and the three times table. It is called a common multiple, right? So it is a multiplication that is in the five times table and the three times table, and common means it's in both. Right, so we can use that as our new denominator. A couple of different ways you can write this. I sometimes like to use one big line, and I just put the 15 here. Okay, so there's our denominator. Our denominator is sorted out. Now what about the numerators? We've got to find that equivalent fraction. So I'm actually going to go the long way around and kind of draw it up fully, and then I'm going to show you a shortcut to do it. All right, so firstly, I'm going to make one-fifth. Okay, so you can see what I've drawn here. I've drawn this box. I've drawn the box in this way so that it's got the 15 squares inside it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, I might get rid of those dots. And uh, I'm going to colour in 1, 1 fifth. It's now divided up into 5 parts and 15 parts. Do you see? So it's divided up into 15 parts like this, but it's also divided up into 5 parts like this. So I'm going to colour in the 1 fifth. Right, do you see that that's 1 out of 5, coloured in? But now, if I make it out of 15, how many parts are coloured in? 1, 2, 3. 3 parts out of 15 are coloured in. So do you get the idea? Let's do the 2 thirds. So with the 2 thirds, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going, to make, I'm going to make sure there's 15 of these blocks inside the 2 thirds. I might do this in one in green for no particular reason. So I've still got 15 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now I'm going to make two thirds, so cut it into thirds, okay? Do you see it's cut into three parts? It's cut into three. Now if I shade it, two parts out of three are shaded, so it's two thirds. But now I'm going to just manipulate that slightly. You can see exactly the same fraction, all right? But now it's cut into 15 parts, and how many are shaded? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 10 over 15. So 10 over 15 is our second numerator. 
And now it's simply a matter of adding them. Just get rid of that. So 3 plus 10 is 13. The denominator stays the same. So it's 13 over 15. So that's the logic behind the conversion. That's the logic behind finding this different denominator. That's a common denominator that goes into the threes and the fives. All right, but there's a, an easier way to do it. And if you really know your tables, this is something you can do in your head. But I'm going to just remove the step of drawing the, the box, okay? So let me just reset my page slightly and I'll show you what we're going to do. So this is the fast way, but it's not the easiest way. There's actually an easier way, but I'm going to save that for later. All right, so same deal. I'll do my big line. And now I'm gonna get my new denominator. And the way I do it is simply by multiplying these two together. Five times three is 15. So it's all about multiplication from this point forward. Okay, now, how do I get my numerators without having to draw them and find those equivalent fractions? Again, it's multiplication. So I want you to think about what we've just done to get our denominator. I did a multiplication, five times three, okay. So now to get my numerators, what do I need to do? All right, so, three times what is 15? Well, obviously it's five, because that's how we got it. So I put five there. Now. If I multiply the denominator by five to get the equivalent fraction, I also multiply the numerator by five. Two times five is 10. And you might remember that's what we got last time. All right, so I'll pop that in the same position as it is here. All right, so now we do the other one. I might just change colors. Okay, five times what gives me 15. Well, it's what we did before, it's this one, five times three. So now I multiply the numerator by the same value. One times three is three. Okay, so the denominator and the numerator get multiplied by the same number. And that number that they get multiplied by is whatever you multiply by to get the common denominator. Okay, this might seem a bit complex, but if you play the video again, I'm sure the logic will become clear. All right, so, now we simply add them up. I'll move it down here because I'm running out of room up here. Three plus 10 is 13 over, the denominator stays the same, 13 over 15. And of course you will notice that it's the same answer that we got before. Let's do one more. This time with a little less explanation and more just a process. And see if you can follow along the steps. Again, I'm gonna rely on my times table knowledge. Okay, so let's do um, one third plus two sixths. One third plus two sixths. I'm gonna do it the long way first, and then I'm gonna show you the short way. So three times six is 18. I'm, I'm just multiplying my two denominators, and that's giving me my new denominator, and that's guaranteed to work. Now I multiply both the numerator and the denominator to get my new numerators. So six times what is 18? Well, of course it's three, because we just did that. Two times three is six. Like that. Three times what gets me 18? Well, obviously it's six. One times six is six. Six plus six is 12 over 18. So that's my answer. You might look at that and think, well, yes, we could cancel it down. And if you want to cancel it down, if you remember the cancelling down video, uh, video, what's a number that goes both into 12 and 18? Well, you might say, hopefully you said six. And the answer is two over three. Okay, I'm gonna show you a slightly different way of doing it, if you're ready for it. Now, if you think, oh, I can't fit any more stuff in my head, great, just, just stop there. But if not, um, have a look at this next demonstration with the same question. So you might be looking at the three and the six and you're like, hey, wait a minute, three goes into six. And you'd be right. So you might decide six is going to be the denominator and you'd be right. And you still follow the same process. 
Now this part's going to be super easy. All right, 6 times what is 6? Well, 6 times 1 is 6. So 2 times 1 is 2, and of course this stays the same. If you're keeping this denominator, obviously this numerator isn't going to change. So that stays the same. Over here it's a little bit of a different story. 3 times what? gives you 6. Well, you can't just do, oh, what was the other number? You've got to kind of work on this one. So 3 times what is 6? Hopefully you've said 3 times 2 is 6. 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, then you add the numerators. 2 plus 2 is 4 over the denominator stays the same, 4 over 6. And you might be looking at the 4 and the 6 and thinking, you know what, I think there's a number that will go into both 4 and 6. And that number would be 2. So 2 into 4 goes 2 times, 2 into 6 goes 3 times, so your final cancel down answer is 2 over 3. So that's how you do addition of fractions with different denominators, and subtraction is the same. You simply convert them so that they have the same denominator, sometimes called a common denominator, but it's the same process. Gets a little bit tricky when it comes to adding and subtracting the mixed numbers, but if you remember the like denominator addition and subtraction of mixed numbers lesson, it's exactly the same process. So first, with the addition, you can add the whole numbers, and then you can add the fractions doing the conversion like this. With the subtraction, sometimes you can just do subtract the whole numbers and subtract the fractions by themselves if the fraction happens to be a bigger value, but most of the time you're going to have to change it to an improper fraction, then do the subtraction and then turn it back into a mixed number at the end. So there'll be some work attached to this video in addition and subtraction of these basic fractions with the different denominators, and hopefully you'll do okay. I might put up another video with the mixed number addition and subtraction, but I might not. I think the principle has been established and I think you can do it, but you might need to go back and check the mixed number video in order to do that. Good luck and as ever, let us know how you go.